<laughs> Good morning. I'm going to get it together here. Good morning. It is a good morning, and Bella's here to help me. This is a new hat. I wanted to show you this. I have two or three more after this, but this one really fits the occasion. And it is a good morning because we're all here. All my grandchildren and grandma loves y'all. It's Sunday morning. I'll be streaming church a little later because it don't come on till 10 o'clock and it's only a little after nine here. So I'm doing good, but what has happened? I received word last night that my closest, best friend, four years younger than me, she has graduated. And you know what us Christians mean by graduated? She's up there with Jesus and the angels. And I'm going to her funeral to support her daughter and her granddaughter. She only had one child. And honestly, her name is Beulah Mae Ryan. New, uh, Clarksville, Indiana is the address if you want to see her obituary. And she and I were so close. I tell you what, we had such great times. We went dancing at the VFW when I was single. We went to church together. We walked together. And I just would share every, all of my life with her I don't share everything with you all. I have some secrets. But me and Beulah Mae, she was my best friend. And now, but she's been in a nursing home for one year. And she started getting forgetful. And she'd, she couldn't run her TV anymore. She didn't know how to run the remote. And she'd say, come help me run my remote. It's just messed up again. And that company keeps charging me. She wasn't paying her bills. So her daughter had to do what she had to do because she was scared for her to cook or run her car. So us, the children had to, the child, she only had the one daughter, Elaine, and one granddaughter, Rachel, who are the sweetest people. And so Elaine, I got to support Elaine today. And I was going to a family get together with James over in Louisville. They're having a surprise birthday party for his niece. Miss Megan, she's going to be 30 or 31, I don't know, but they're, they're doing it not until February, right before Valentine's Day. So I sent her a present and apologized, but I cannot let Elaine down. Y'all know that. So, you know, James had a good idea this morning about something that I think is a good idea. I don't know what y'all think about it, but you all know this is a ministry that I tell you what Jesus has done for me and he's still doing it. I'm 90 years old and I don't look too bad. Do I need a facelift? Not if I hold it like this. Now a facelift would get it. Don't you think? What do you think, Bella? Get over here. Get over here. You know you're not supposed to be on that side. <laughs> she minds pretty good. I've been looking at Jared's TV, Jared King TV stuff. And he's got a, a wife that has a YouTube. And I keep forgetting her name every time. I got it now. I looked her up again and watched some of her stuff last night. And she does Appalachia stuff and ghost stories and all kinds of things. And takes beautiful, beautiful Appalachian photography. I looked at one of them and it looked like art. Really. So check out L-O-R-A, Laura, Queen, she's a queen, Queen Laura TV, I think that's right, oh dear Jesus, I hope, I wrote it down somewhere, now what did I do with that, I don't know, Queen Laura, Appalachia TV, I'm going to have to look that up, if not, I'll, I'll put a short on and get it right. But she's Jared, she's Jared King TV's wife. She's a sweet girl. So anyway, <laughs> I tried. Now, what else? So much is going on. We got up this morning. I got, I woke up at three o'clock and I just had to get up. So I got up, made me some coffee. And I, I looked at, 
all my, I tried to answer a lot of comments. Y'all are being so wonderful to me. Now, where did my scarf go? Bella. I mean, I need my scarf. Especially today. Granny needs all she can get. She's got to do the best she can with what she's got. Oh, I was going to show you this hat inside. I don't know what this is made out of. It feels like it's made out of those lawn chairs <laughs> that you sit on. You know, it's like straw or something, and it's shiny. These, these vintage hats certainly suit a vintage woman who is me. Now, what would we name this one? It's not casual. Oh, it's just sweet. This is a sweet little old hat, and I don't need a hat pin to wear it. I could wear this to church, except I stream church. Y'all know that, and it starts at 10, so I'm, I'm not missing a thing. Our preacher, Reverend John Carmichael, he's got YouTube stuff all over, but James and I had a suggestion that we might propose to him, and I don't know what he'll think about it, but he has so many stories of what God has done for him. Of course, he preaches. He should share, in my and James's opinion, some of those things that God's done for him personally, like real life, because that boy didn't get saved till he was 14 years old. Now he's 50, and he has shared a lot with the church of how God has went before him, and he ought to just get him a real life YouTube and tell the world. I had somebody from, oh, where was that from? Wales, Wales. Can you believe that? And there's like, I don't know how many I have now. I'll have to check that one. I'll check it every little bit. <laughs> Thank you, YouTube. I am meeting so many people. And there's Nathan and Mean Badger and uh, Charlotte. I can remember some of them, most of them I can't. But some of them have been following me from the beginning when I was absolutely not all over the internet. And I remember them. And I remember when I had 318 subscribers. When young man Cole found me and he put me on TikTok. He said the Lord led him. He had prayed about it. said, Lord, lead me to somebody that will share about Jesus. It's just my nature, kiddo, to share. I mean, so my very first one, I just shared a whole lot. And I didn't even realize, honestly, that I talked that much about the Lord all the time. It's just, it's just, he's just with me all the time. And I just praise him all the time. And here I am 90. <laughs> Thanks be to him in good health. No medication right there. That's a miracle of God. And you all know it. Bella, you ran off and left me. Get over here. Get it, get it, get it. Get here. Get here right now. Get up here and show people how pretty you are. Get up here. Come on. Come on, little girl. When I look at this iPad and I see me, I see my own grandma. And my own grandma, Ayers, died of heart congestive heart failure when she was 58 years old. And I grieved so bad over my grandma because I was just 12. She used to take me to the cellar. They had cows. Get up here, Bella. Get up here. Get up here. She would used to, when I was little and living on the farm, I would go over to her farm, which we walked, and it's called Getting There by Shank's Pony. Have you ever heard that? Shank's Pony means walk. So we walked across the pasture land, which was about mm, six blocks. It was pretty far away. So I would go over to Grandma's, and she says, you come down here. You look puny. You got to have some cream. She would take a teacup, skim that cream off, and said, now drink that. It was delicious. I mean, pure cream. I've been hungry for that ever since, and I admit that I do like that stuff like that. And I put whipping cream in my coffee. I like whipping cream. I don't drink it out of the jug or the container, but I put it in my coffee 
grandma got me spoiled. And I did start gaining and I, she helped me. She was such a blessing. And she had make her son, Carl, who was my uncle, get out of his high chair when he was six years old and let me sit in it. Grandma favored me. I was talking to my brother Norman the other day about Grandpa, Grandma Ayers and how kind she was to me. And he said, every time I come over there, she ended up whooping my butt. Well, he was a boy. <laughs> and he was probably getting into stuff he shouldn't be getting into. Oh, I didn't show you this. Norman says, she was rough on me. I said, well, she sure was a rough on me. She treated me special. And I, when she died... I cried and cried and cried. It made me sick. They took me to the doctor. I was grieving so much. And the doctor says, she's got heart trouble, I believe. My heart would just start pounding when he would. I had white coat syndrome. I know my blood pressure went up. I was scared of doctors. And my heart would start pounding. He said, I tell you what you recommend for her, parents. He told my folks, m mom and dad, she needs rest. She has heart trouble. From listening to my heart pound, I did not have heart trouble. But anyway, I never, and I figured out later what it was. I was 12 years old. So when, he said, when she goes to school, have them get a cot and let her lay down during the noon break and rest so that it save her heart. They did that for a year. I enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, and then one day in the wintertime, when I was in sixth grade, we was in a little three-room schoolhouse in Fredericksburg, Indiana, and that's where I had that fourth grade teacher that spanked my rear end because I couldn't learn arithmetic. I know how now. Count your fingers. Get your pencil and paper. Go, get that, that, that. That works. I find myself still doing that. But I did learn my division at, you know, like two plus two times two is whatever and all that. I did learn that and I remember it some. <laughs> I don't need it. I just, that's why I didn't uh, get out of high school. Quit. I didn't worry about quitting high school because I figured I'd never need algebra and all that stuff. But I loved history and I loved to read. So I have read a lot, and I'm a little loquacious. Y'all know what that means? Look it up. Loquacious. This is your word for the day. Anyhow, I do have a good vocabulary, and it's kind of fun to stump James once in a while, you know, number three. But he went to college, but he didn't read like I did. And I, I tell you what, when I used to get to board, Daddy would buy these books by the bushel at yard, at uh he would go to these um, auctions, and he would buy a bushel basket full of books. And he bought a dictionary one time. And I would get so bored that I would go to the outhouse where nobody would bother you. And you could read. And Mom didn't know I was out there forever just reading a book. And if I didn't have a book to read, I could always look at the pictures in the Sears and Buck catalog in color. I mean, the rings were gorgeous. I loved the shoes, which I got one pair a year. There were so many pretty things. Pajamas. We never knew what a pajama was, I, except looking in the catalog, because we had to sleep in our petticoat. That's the thing you wear underneath your dress. I don't guess you all know about that. And I only had two dresses, and we had to wash them often. I made it through. And we had, you know, people talk about, I walked a mile to school to catch, well, we walked about a half a mile to catch the bus. And the wind would blow from the west. And you couldn't, I mean, you just, it would freeze you. And then my friend, Beulah May, who we're saying goodbye to today, her, her, she, her grandma lived not far from the school bus stop where we had to walk to. She didn't have to walk as far as us. Because her stepmother and her daddy lived right at the end, and they would let us come in and wait on the bus. And I tell you what, that was a lot better. We didn't have that all the time until they moved there about three years before I finished catching the school bus. So, or something like that. 
and it was such a blessing to get out of the rain and the cold, and Beulah Mae would be there, and I was six years old, and I mean, she was six years old, and I was 12. I'm, uh, I'm five or six years younger than her. I forget how old she is. I saw it in her obituary. I think maybe she's 86. Well, anyway, she was the same age as my little tattletale sister, Phyllis. If you saw my videos, you know what a tattleteller she was. She kept me and my brother Norman in trouble. Oh, my goodness. Here, I better shut up. But I'm going to go. You know what? It's always fun to talk to y'all. I just enjoy it. I thank God for opening this door for me. I never dreamed when I sat down with that iPad that day and said, I believe I'll put that on YouTube. If you look at that number one video, you notice I look prettier now. Well, because I didn't really think it'd get on YouTube. <laughs> that I mean, I really thought only my kids would see it, you know, because I was going to tell them I did a YouTube thing. And look what the Lord has done. I'm talking to people in Wales, India, Australia. I think there's about uh, 28,000 subscribers now. And when I do these little shorts, they love them. It's strange what the Lord does is beyond our comprehension, folks. If he's big enough, which he is, that he did this world, and then he sent Jesus so that we might have life and have it forever. We have life forever, one place or the other. Heaven or hell, kiddos. And I'm going to see Beulah again. And you know what, honey? If you know the Lord, we'll visit in heaven. And I hope he gives me a peaceful death whenever it comes, like Aunt Mary, who she just went right like that. And like my mom, I tell you, He's a good God, and I love y'all. And y'all just walk that path that would be pleasing to the Lord. And I'm going to do my best for that sweet daughter and granddaughter today. I love you. Now, here's where I... that I should have made a bow out of this thing. And maybe it would have stayed. <laughs> I'm always thinking. I'm going to make bows later. Here's why I turned this iPad off. I wish I had a remote for this thing, but I don't have anything but my finger. So here goes. I'm going to try to turn it off without looking silly. I have to reach it. It's in front of me. Bye-bye, children.